and welcome. Phil Shane alongside Thomas Rongan here with BN Sports, and thanks for jumping in. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, by the way, so please feel free to contribute on Twitter and then the comments down below. Uh, Thomas, we're talking about Clint Dempsey, who's just retired from soccer immediately, and while it seems somewhat abrupt, in some ways it was a career that is a miracle that it got started anyway. Give me an idea, if you could, what is your view of the Dempsey legacy? My view of the Dempsey legacy is when I saw him for the first time, when he was an unknown to everybody, by the way, when I went to Furman versus the Citadel, and I was going for Ricardo Clark and Drew Moore and Stuart Holden on the other side. After one minute, I go, who is this freestyling guy up front? And it's Clint Dempsey. That's all she wrote. Went to the 203 under 20 World Cup, got his first cap for the national team, signed with New England in 203 in the draft as a seventh or eighth pick. Steve Nickel, Paul Mariner did a great job honing his skills, goes to England and probably ends up having the best European career of any of our Americans outside of maybe some of the goalkeepers that we have. So Clint's legacy is not only that, in my opinion, he's played at the highest level abroad, scoring goals against Chelsea, Liverpool, you calling with Ray that that, that Juve goal as, as well. well. It's like what was the rap lyric he had, what real recognizes real. So that uh, was that was Clint's that was Clint's initiation with the uh -huh. other 20s rapping. And I'm telling you, every day in the bus we all went. Clint, what you got? Freestyle rapping, he was unbelievable. Trailer pack, Nacogdocia, Texas, playing all right as a 12-year-old in the Mexican over 30 illegal leagues with his older brother. That's where he picked up some of the stuff that I had not seen of any American, and still not. He had a braveness to him, an edge, a chip on his shoulder. He cried at the Confederations Cup when he got the third medal because he wanted to win as well. He went where it hurts, where Landon at times maybe didn't go. So that is my Let's legacy. Talk about that a little bit because he is always compared to because they share the same generation to Landon Donovan. And Donovan, in some ways, was the soccer mom kid that moved mm -hmm. his way up through the program, through Olympic development, et cetera. He was the good kid. Clinton was from the other side of the tracks. Uh, is that a fair comparison? Yes and, 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 and no. I mean, both players are, to me, the most significant players over the last uh, 30 years that have helped in different ways our game to the next level. Clint raced on the field, not only here, but abroad. Lendon more so in the United States at a critical time when MLS started to grow and Lendon Donovan won three or four or five MLS Cups as well. Let the national team in the international arena. The World Cup Royals. With exactly Bruce Arena giving him at 19 years old with Beasley an opportunity to shine in 202 against Portugal. The, the goal against Mexico in the round of 16 that stands out. But Clint Dempsey scored in three consecutive World Cups. Clint Dempsey brought games alive. And what I mean by that is the goal against, against England. All of a sudden the team went, we believe we can do this. The goal against Portugal in 2014 and Ghana, the third consecutive World Cup assist that he scored a goal. Not, other, not one other player's done that. I think Clint's legacy is more. Well, let's, let's talk about that for a little bit. We're talking about the greatest of all time, and those are the two. The best of the greatest. That's a very good comparison. Clint is the best, Lendon is the greatest. Well, give me your top five, if we could, of the United States men's national team players. Who's your top five? Let's start at number five. I went positionally a little bit. We couldn't pick goalkeepers, but I would have picked a goalkeeper. I picked Eddie Pope. Eddie Pope, to me, was back then the modern center back. Mm -hmm. Uh, Umtiti, a Varane, had pace, was good in the air, could tackle, and was simple and on the ball. Four. Number four, at number four, I have an interesting guy, Michael Bradley. He's I know, an unsung hero. The combination of Michael Bradley coming through the IMG Academy, which is the under-17 camp that we have where players hone their skills, went on a whim to MLS to play for his father, went to here at Vain and said, you know what, I want to continue to develop. Very smart already, knew that he didn't want to make the big step yet, goes to Borussia Mönchengladbach in Germany, does well. And you know what, I don't care what people say, still started quite a lot of games for Roma in Syria, comes back, wins an MLS Cup with Toronto, the captain to me, the position as well, very important. Number three, Number three Claudio Reyna. <coughs> Grace, beauty, abroad, here as well. Leadership. Absolutely, without a doubt, was at UVA, Bruce Arena's right hand man, was at the national team, Bruce so Arena's key guy. One versus two. Let's go. Who's number two? The greatest player ever, Lennon Donovan. Mm. 
the best player ever, Clint Dempsey. Well, give me your view of, of my five. And, and again, one point, and if you know me, it can be annoying sometimes, just knowing me. Uh, <laughs> but the fact that soccer was in this country before 1990 and 1994. So I'm going to go back a little bit deeper, uh, perhaps that some don't have. And you know what? Look at Google. It can be your friend. Maybe you'll learn something and find out that there actually is a rich vein of history in this country. But I'm going to start out with Eddie Pope. I agree with you. And I think, that unfortunately, on both of ours, there's so many players that maybe could have done more if they would have tested themselves more. Mm -hmm. And Pope was the guy that felt comfortable at DC United, but he was one of the greatest defenders out there. Um, I'm going to go with Steve Trundle, who did go across. Yep. And I think in many ways, it was his ability to prove that, yes, a United States player can play at the top level in the Bundesliga. What was it 400 games or more? Paved um, the way for a lot of players, by the way. I have Donovan number three. Wow. I have Dempsey number two. Wow. And I have Billy Gonzalez number one. Billy and Gonzalez. He was uh, Love it. born in the United States, uh, part of the 30 and 34 teams. And in 1930, when they were coming back, he actually was offered contracts by Brazilian teams because he was that good. Scored against the Brazilian national team in a 4-3 loss. Uh, went to Italy in 34, same exact thing. The Italian teams are trying to buy him. He says, you know what, maybe I made a mistake by not sticking there, but I think it was 11 of 15 U.S. Open Cup finals. There's other guys out there. I, on my list with that, Archie Stark, who Messi just broke his scoring record. Uh, Bert Padno, four goals in the first World Cup yep. with hat tricks. But you have the Brian McBrides, the Tav Ramoses, the, the, uh, you mentioned Reyna. There's a lot of good players Correct. out there. That's a very interesting one with, with Gonzalez, obviously, because that's like, he's almost like the Di Stefano of Europe. You know, I mean, the guys that. Of American it, soccer. Exactly. And, and, and that generation doesn't get a lot of credits. I get drawn towards the 94 generation to put MLS and yeah, soccer Balboa on the map, everyone. obviously, because of the World Cup here. You look at Thomas Dooley, uh, Balboa, Tony Mayola in goal, uh, Alexi Lalas with his long red hair, Eric Winalda, yeah. and Claudio Reyna, the Ramos. Out there, uh, Correct. Because uh, there are three at least who would be towards the top of the list. Give me your idea of a future player that could be challenging for the greatest, or at least a, a top five spot. And, and the reason why I picked Jonathan Brooks because if we, and we will, with this new generation, with this young generation, if we want to aspire and cultivate, which we can, a DNA, a style of play, then Jonathan Brooks, a left-footed 6'4 center back, is instrumental for any team that wants to play based on what we are all about in the United States, because we have some skill, we have technical plays, a Latin influence. We have, we talked about Eddie Pope, the African-American influence as well. We got killer forwards, and you're gonna talk about a few young ones as well. That combination, when harnessed, needs to. There's a reason why $100 million goalkeepers are going right now because they're great with their feet. We need somebody in the heart of the defense that A, can defend, which Jonathan Brooks can, two, is technically astute, which he is, by the way. He's played 100 Bundesliga games, scored last weekend, what was it, 30 million to, uh, to uh, uh, of American ever. Exactly. Has all the tools to be a big time player for 2022 and at 32 ish, still in 2026, that we can put a mental around and say, you know what, you're the heart and soul of our defense. Here's where it starts, lefty, great passer. Here you go in the air, which he's strong as well. and. Leadership is the only area, I think, where he needs to work on. He could be big time and could become in my top five in 10 years from now. There's another guy who I think is really close. That's Weston McKinney. Uh, and we're going to get a chance to see him, oh. especially with uh, European performances this year. A guy I'd love to see is Novakovic because, again, 6'4", 6'5", great with the ball at his feet, kind of an American Aiden Dzeko. But I still think there's too many question marks on both of them at the moment. The one guy that seems automatic, seems to be a lock, is our next Brian McBride, maybe our first Miroslav Klose, and that's Josh Sargent, a guy that just has a nose for goal and has the ability to, in tight space, and he's not a giant, but he knows where the defender is, he knows how to move, he knows how to lean, and he knows how to score. And Josh Sargent, before this year is out, I think it's going to be scoring goals in the Bundesliga. And that's a great point. I'm talking about now that back four having somebody that's similar to Josh Sargent as a nine. All right? Technically a little bit better than McBride. Technically better than Eddie Pope or Marcelo Balboa. More finger spits and gefool. Feeling for the game, which Sargent has as well. A killer player, but also a guy that can combine 
if we in those positions get players that we're talking about the skill set right now, the future is bright. I like Let's that. I like that call, because uh, Phil. We were talking about this before we actually started. There's some really good talent out there. We've seen it on the 17s. We've seen it on the 20s, um, and it's starting to bubble up. I mean, we didn't even mention Tyler Adams and some of the other ones, and even up in Canada, uh, what's going on with Davies? The next generation. The, the guys that are 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, that are just about ready to emerge, like we've seen with the LA Galaxy and New York Red Bulls, Weston right up the road here. What are we doing to get this next Dempsey into the picture? Well, that's a great, uh, great question. I mean, the continuation, obviously, of, of, of identifying talented players, which means the pool of scouts experienced scouts need to be out there in areas where we might not want to be but then again you talk about banks for instance in milwaukee having his own club maybe having a tentacle with an mls team as well funneling some african-american players in that particular believe me mexico is doing a great job scouting for us in the south because dennis the Clouser, my good friend has told me that and already turned him green sometimes <laughs> so i i think coaching education phil if, if i had to put my money somewhere it's coaching education because yes we can compete i talked to dave Funderburg. Their 15s go all over the world. They said, Thomas, we can compete with anybody, and we're even better than age group. They go back, with all due respect, uh, to uh, the Columbus crew, and my opponents go back to Real Madrid, Barcelona, Ajax, or whatever it might be. So can we create an, even a better competitive playing uh, 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 environment and a better coaching environment? We don't have enough good coaches yet. And I want to continue, obviously, to say that American coaches do have the energy and anything it takes. Former players, take your licenses and give something back because you're right, Phil. This next step could be monumental. I firmly believe that in 2026, there is something about a quarter or a semifinals based on the talent, the Josh Sargents that you just talked about, the McKinney's uh -huh. and politics of the world. I, I agree with you 100%. Some saying it's eight generations down. I think mm. it's a lot closer than that. Yep. And I think MLS needs to adapt because they're losing a lot of these young players because they're not signing them young and they're going over to Germany. Even Infantino agrees with you. Uh, absolutely. Well, red card. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks for joining us here. And Thank again, you. We'd love to have your comments down below or send them in as well. And uh, stay tuned, beinsports.com. We'll have much more of this.